I've created a cluster of things right here, and then I copy and pasted another cluster, and I have a couple of these off canvas. And what I want to do is represent the number of things we have in each of these clusters in different bases and in different number systems. So first, we're going to do it in base in base 10, sometimes called a decimal number system. Decimal, you know the prefix deci, it refers to 10, decimal number system. When people talk about a dec decimal number system, they're not just talking about what we traditionally associate with decimal numbers to the right of the decimal point. They're talking about base 10, so in a decimal number system. So the way you would think about it is the way you would think about, really, well, I mean, one way to think about it is how you think about money. If you have a bunch of money, or you're trying to represent a bunch of money with the smallest possible bills, you'll see the, you'll see the biggest, you'll try to figure out the biggest bill that is smaller than that amount of money. And you would start there if you wanted to have the fewest number of bills. So over here, if we're in base 10, we want to find the biggest power of 10 that fits into however many objects we have here. And let's just count it real quick. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. I might have missed a few, but the bottom line is 100 does not go into this, but 10 would. So we can divide the biggest, the biggest power of 10 or the biggest multi uh, power of 10, I should say, that is divisible into this is 10. So let's divide this into as many groups of 10 as we can. So let's find, let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So let me separate these off. So that is 110 right over there. Let me make sure I counted that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let me find another group of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this right here is another group of 10. And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this right here is another group of 10. And then this over here is not a group of 10. This is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it looks like there's 35 objects here. So I can represent these three groups of 10. So let me actually just write down in words first. So we have three tens. So we have three tens, or we could have consider it three groups of 10s. And then in what's left over, I can't divide 10 into it, so I have to go down to a lower power of 10, and that's 1. So how many 1s are there right over here? So then we have 1 1, 2 1s, 3 ones, 4 ones, 5 ones. So it's 3 tens plus 5 plus 5 ones. And the way we would represent it in a base 10 number system, we have a tens place. So in the tens place, so let me write in the tens place, we would write 3. And then in the ones place, in the ones place, we would write 5. And so we would just associate this as 35. But this is just representing it in a decimal number system. It's, we've gotten used to this, but this is just one of really an infinite number of number systems. Now let's do the same thing with the same cluster, but let's do it in base 2. Let's do it in base base 2, or where we can only represent it with two different digits. In base 10, you have 10 different digits to play with. Or you could call this a binary number system. Binary number system. You only have two digits. Binary number system. So what is the largest power of 2 that can fit in this? Remember, we want kind of have the, few, the, the fewest number of coins or bills. So we want to put the largest power of 2 that would fit into this. So what would be the largest power of 2? So we have 35 things. So let's see, the largest 2 to the 4th power is 16. 2 to the 5th power is 32. So 32 goes into this. So let's find ourselves a group of 32. One, well really we could just exclude, we could just exclude three things. So this right over here, this right over here is a group of 32. So we have one, one 32s, 32s. We just write it like that. And then we have no 16s, no groups of 16s here. And then we have no, because 16 can't go into what's left over. We have no groups of 8. We have no groups of 4. But then we have groups of 1. Remember, 1 is just the low. It's 2 to the 0 power. So we have, we have 1, 2. Oh, let me, be, let me be very careful. I skipped 1. So let me, let's draw our places here. So I, we looked at groups of, of 32. 32 did go into it. Then you go to 16. Then you go to 4. 4 still can't go into this remainder right here. But 2 can. So now let's do a group of 2. 
So a group of two would look just like that. So we have one, twos, one, twos. And then what we have left over is just one group of ones. So then we have, let me just in a new color, one group of, that's not a new color, one group of ones. No, that's still not the same. Having trouble switching color. One group of ones. So one, ones. So how many, how would we represent this in base two? And to do that, let's just think about our places. This is the ones place. That's the ones place. This is the twos place. That's the twos. That is the fours place. Let me, I'm running out of space here. So this right here is the fours place. This right here is the eights place. Let me write, do this a little smaller so I don't bump into our diagram. So that is eights. Eights. Now this right here is sixteens. Sixteens. And then we're just going up, we're multiplying by two in each place as we go to the left. And then this right here is the 30 seconds place. 30, and I'm writing it out so we don't confuse. You know, I could write the, the base 10 symbols here, but then that could be kind of confusing. So let me just write the words here to say that, look, we're just, these are, these are the places. And I don't want to use base 10 to represent base 2 places. So we know from kind of grouping this, when we the largest group, we have 1 32s. So we write a 1 in the 32s place. There's no groups of 16 here in the leftover. So there's no groups of 16s. There's no groups of eights here. There's no groups of four here. There is a group of twos. So there's one group of twos. And then there's one group of ones. One group of ones. So one, zero, 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 one, one is how you would represent this number, or 30, this number of things, or 35 things, in base two. In base two. Now what I want to do is take it to the next level. Base two has fewer digits than what we're used to in the decimal number system. What happens if we had more digits? So let's go to base 16. And this is fascinating. Base 16. Base 16. Or the a hexadecimal. Hexadecimal number system. Hexadecimal number system. No, I don't have to write number system. Hexadecimal. And here, we're going to have 16 digits. So we're going to have all of the traditional digits. Let me write them all out. We're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so this is 10 digits right here. But now we're going to extend the number of digits we can deal with. So instead of having to reuse these digits to represent 10, we're going to represent 10 with an A. And we're going to represent 11 with a B, and represent 12 with a C, and represent 13 with a D, represent 14 with an E, and then represent 15 with an F. So now we have 16 digits. We have 1 through 15 plus 0. Remember, in base 10, you have 1 through 9 plus 0. So you kind of have symbols that go all the way up to whatever your base is. So in this situation, you know, don't don't be confused. This this A when we're talking in hexadecimal represents 10 objects. This B would be if I say, "Hey, you owe me B dollars." I'm telling you that you owe me $11. It's just another way to represent 11 instead of you doing a 1 and a 1 that we would do in base 10. So if you had these digits, how would you represent this many things? So remember, we're in base 16 now. So let's draw the number of spaces. So you're always going to have your one space. If you know your powers, that's 16 to the 0th power. And then if you multiply that times 16, you have your 16's place. You have your 16's place, because we're in base 16, or hexadecimal. And then if you go one place more, you have your 256 place. And I'll write it down, but I'll write it in quotes. Your 256 place. And I got 256 because that's 16 times 16, or 16 to the second power. So how would you represent this? So first of all, does 200, and we could keep going up by multiplying by 16. But does 256 go into this thing right over here? It doesn't. We know we only have 35 things right here. So we, don't, we, won't, use, we won't use the 256 place when we represent this number. And so 16 does go into this. So how many groups of 16 do we have here? So let's count it out. Let me do it with a new color. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So hopefully I didn't lose any. So that's one group of 16. 
Let me count it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's one group of 16. Let's get another group. See if we can get another group of 16 in here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So all of these right over here are another group of 16. It's another group of 16. And then we definitely can't divide 16 into what's left. So we have two 16s. We have two 16s. And then the only other place we have is 1s. And then we have three 1s. 1, 2, 3. And we have three we have three ones. So in base 16 in hexadecimal, we have two we have two things in the 16s place. So we would put a 2 over here. Let me do it in that same color. We would put we would put let me do let me do that same blue. So we have two 16s and we have three ones. Three ones. And you might be tempted to say, oh, that's just 23. No, we're in base 16 here. And usually, you know, sometimes people will sometimes, you know, tell you what base you're in, but we're in base 16. We're in base 16. So this isn't just 23. This is representing 35 things. It's telling us we have two 16s and three ones. And it all adds up. 2 times 16 is 32, plus three ones is 35. I'll do more examples of this in the next few videos.